any Magic the Gathering players ask the question, should I sell cards on eBay? What are you, stupid? No. Come on. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, Cardboard Warriors. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, selling cards online today on eBay or TCG Player or whatever. Um, I'm going to use eBay as an example because that's where I sell mine. Uh, we're going to use this Asika God of the Trees kind of a primer. Um, this isn't the showcase one, but I did recently sell some showcase ones. And even at the uh, the market price is like 8 to 10, uh, I sold them at 10. So I actually got a little bit more for them. The reason is because I ship my cards in a box, not an envelope. So, but we're going to get into that. So basically, bulk of your uh, sales are going to be cards like this that average that kind of $10 range. Um, that's the bulk of what you're going to get in the boxes when you open them. And in particular, so this card I sold for, I sold the showcase version of this card for $9.94. All right, here it is. And you'll see that it only shows $8.30 because eBay, of course, takes... Out of that $9.84, $1.64, so at least $8.30, right? You're thinking, well, that's not too bad, you know? That's not a big deal. I've seen worse. But at the end of the day, that's uh, that's what I get paid before I have to ship the card out. Now, a lot of people on eBay will just literally take this card. They might wrap some paper around it or a piece of cardboard next to it, and they'll put it in a regular old envelope for 60-something cents, 69, 70 cents, whatever it is, and mail it that way, and hope for the best. Now, a lot of times the card actually gets there in one piece, but a lot of times it doesn't. So when you do that, you're taking the gamble of, one, damaging a good card, <laughs> which sucks, uh, but also if you don't get that card to the customer in the correct shape, in the correct condition, which condition is everything with magic, um, then you're gonna end up having to refund them or do a return on it. Well, on a $10 card, uh, my shipping in a box, because I don't wanna have to deal with all that stuff, I wanna make sure that the card gets there 100% correct, you know, in good condition, packed fresh, just like I pulled it. I don't want to risk it getting bent up and dinged up and damaged or, you know, folded in half or whatever happens. Um, you know, I mean, I get booster boxes damaged in the mail that are in heavy cardboard. So I'm not going to ship a single card in an envelope. If you want to ship single cards in envelopes, you can probably make some decent money. But remember that you're going to lose a lot of these cards. So... This is a $10 card. If you lose that card, if it gets damaged, you've got to refund the buyer because eBay is always going to side with the buyer, not the seller. So you're going to end up having to go full refund. So you're out the shipping cost and the $10 card. So, you know, that's just a kind of a big loss leader. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, including bigger people, say, you know, that's like a 10%. 10% of the time that's going to happen and you just mark that up to the cost of doing business. Well, if you're not a big seller running, you know, 10,000 cards a month out of your store, then that's a huge loss. You know, I mean, if you're selling 10 cards a month and you lose one of them at $10, that's, that's not good. Now the, so I end up spending about $4 for shipping plus about 50 cents for the box because the boxes aren't free either. Boxes cost money too. So the boxes I buy, I spend about 50 cents a piece for. I buy them in bulk off Amazon. Um, buying them locally is even more. Uh, but, you know, you end up spending like a buck a box if you buy them locally. So it's best to buy them in bulk um, off of either like eBay or Amazon or whatever. I find them the cheapest on Amazon. But so now if you take that $8.30 that I got paid for this card and you subtract $4.50... Now we're looking pretty bad. We're look, we're under $4. Well, also, I do promoted listings on eBay, which means I put a 1% into promoting the listings so they come up better in the search results. So there's another $0.10. Cents. So, And then you look at the other small little things that a lot of people don't factor into, like tape. Uh, tape is not cheap. And uh, um, the paper to print out the labels and print out the packing slip and the ink for your printer and having to run your printer and upkeep your printer and the little bit of electricity that it costs. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to end up making like $2 on a $10 card. Now, 
you know, if you've already got the card laying around, that's all fine and good. But if you're opening boxes to try and flip the singles, the odds of you making money off of a box are pretty slim. So let's pull up. I don't know how well we'll be able to see this on the tablet, but this is like the current TCG player market prices on Call Time, the set that this came out of. So your most expensive card is your Gold Span Dragon, which is $39, right? So $40 card. And then you got the Warren Collections with the different showcases and stuff like that, but they're average about $30. And then you got Valky, which is the next, the third most expensive, which the regular version is only $15. Um, I've had Valky's listed for $15 and they haven't sold. So, uh, then you got the Coma Showcase is like 11. Halver, uh, is 11. And then Rare Coma is 10. And then here's your Asikas. And then you got the Borderless Pathways and your Arlen's Epiphany and stuff like that. So, Arlen's Epiphany, I've been trying to sell for 10. Haven't had any luck with that. So, the Asikas are the only thing that I'm really selling in this $10, $11 range, 10 to $15 range. And the Warren Collections aren't selling either. I've had some Warren Collections up for a while, uh, the Showcase ones, and the Phyrexian one as well. And uh, Goldspan Dragons aren't selling terribly well either. So I open a lot of products. So I have these cards laying around that I don't have anything I can do with them anyway. So that's why I'm selling them, trying to recoup some of my losses so I can buy more boxes to open for you guys. But if you look at it, you know, as, as a business model, and you're going to open boxes to try and flip singles, uh, or just open boxes to flip singles for yourself, not as a business, not related to anything like a YouTube channel or whatever. It's just not very <laughs> fundamentally sound because these are all mythics. Uh, you know, I mean, we're looking at mythics here. You're going to get maybe a couple of these in a box if you're lucky. And the odds of getting gold span and a Warren collection on the same box are pretty much, <laughs> you know, very, very slim. Uh, so most of your bulk, you're going to end up with Asikas and Halvers, which are great cards. Maybe a Valky, if you're lucky. Maybe a Warren Collection, maybe a Goldspan in a box. Um, you know, and these aren't even guaranteed. You might not get any of these in a box. You might open a box and not get any of these cards. And, uh, you know, anything under $10 just is pointless to even try and sell on eBay because of the fees and because of the shipping costs and all that. You know, if you saw a $5 card and you spent $5 to ship it, you know, <laughs> forget it. Uh, the other big thing that people don't factor in is at the time. You know, it takes time to photograph the cards and then it takes time to uh, list the cards. Um, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time, but, you know, I spend about two hours photographing and listing like 10 cards. Um, <laughs> so it's, it, it is a bit of time. So if they're all $10 cards, and I'm going to make two bucks a pop off of them when they sell, if they sell, uh, you know, two, three bucks a pop on each one. That's just not a lot of money for my time. So you have to have those big hits. But unless you're opening a ton of boxes, you're not going to have a lot of those big hits. Uh, if you are if you can afford to open like three to five hundred uh, boxes, not, not dollars, three to five hundred boxes of each set, then you can actually kind of make some profit because you're going to get enough of those big pulls to really kind of make that money back on those boxes on that initial investment. And then you've got all that extra bulk too. And you can, you can look at, uh, doing like the common uncommon play sets and stuff like that, that make a little bit of money. But you know, for the most, for the most part, your average person's going to open maybe a case of six boxes. Like, like me, I open about a case of six boxes. Uh, typically of, of each type of product and then some of the ancillary products as well. But, you know, I'm not getting enough of these mythics and stuff and the, these big hits to really be able to have a play set for myself and sell a bunch online to recoup the money that I've got into the boxes. There's no way I'm making the money back off the boxes. Your typical box, you know, you're going to pay between $80 and $100 a box. Um, well, these days, $80 boxes are pretty much gone. <laughs> uh, I think the cheapest you can find them now is $85.90 a box and up to the $100, $110 range. So there's no way, really, uh, that you're going to get that kind of money back and be able to instantly flip the cards on, on eBay. Now, we're not talking about Modern Horizons 2. That's a totally different story. But <laughs> the, uh, the, the, uh, the likeliness of a standard of every set being able to actually you know, open a case or two and flip the singles and make your money back, pretty much impossible because of the things like shipping and the fees and, 
you know, the stuff like that, the packaging material and, and your time and the, the paper and the printer ink and all that stuff, it all adds up over time. And it really kind of eats into any kind of profit you might have made. So a lot of people look at, oh, the box EV is $115. So if I open this box that I get for $90 and I get $115, I'm making profit. No, you're not. <laughs> even if, even if uh, that $115 is five big cars and you get all five of those big cars in that box, which is impossible to get the five biggest hits in the same box for the most part. It's almost impossible. But say you got lucky and you did get that 115 EV out of that $90 box that's and, it, and it's all in five cards, that's still, you got to ship five different cards out. By the time you do the shipping alone, you've already lost money. Not to mention the eBay fees or TCG player fees, uh, not to mention the packaging material, not to mention your time. So uh, for the for the average player or collector, I highly recommend to stay away from trying to flip singles. Now, if you just uh, you got a good day job and you're just looking for a few extra bucks and you, you open a bunch of cars that like you're a commander player and you open like three of this, this high end card and you only need one. Uh, you know, flipping those extra cards for a few extra bucks here and there, not a bad idea, as long as you're smart about it. Like I said, uh, don't try to, uh, do the envelope thing. Uh, if you're only flipping a few cards, make sure you send them in a box to where they're not going to get damaged, or at the very least, a top loader and a bubble mailer, um, to make sure that they don't get damaged, and then wrap some cardboard around the outsides of it, you know, stuff like that. You don't want to, uh, try and try and ship cards out in envelopes and lose, you know, every 10th card if you're only shipping out 10 cards a month. You know, that's that's really going to destroy any kind of profit you might have made. But anyways, I'll do another video on the actual boxing process and how I ship them and stuff uh, to kind of give you guys some insight into that. And if you're curious about doing it, how to do it and whatnot uh, to get the cards there in perfect shape and everything. But let me know, uh, let me know what you guys think, and if you've sold some cards on eBay, or if you sell a lot of cards on eBay, or or TCG player, and, and let me know how it's going for you and what you think about it. But I say, unless you're unless you're doing a business like like I'm actually doing this YouTube thing and trying to grow it into something big, hopefully in the future, you know, and uh, I'm you know using the single sales, selling the extra stuff that I get that I that I don't need for my collection to try and help, you know, get a little bit more cash flow coming in to buy more boxes and open more stuff. But I'm not making profit on each box. I'm not opening enough product to actually make profit on each box. So it's a numbers game and you got to look at really big numbers if you want to try and make profit on each box that you open. If you open 500 boxes and you sell all the high-end cards out of it, um, and sell play sets of commons, uncommons, stuff like that, you're probably going to make a profit on each box as an average overall. If you add up all the sales from those 500 boxes and the cost of those 500 boxes, you're probably going to start looking in the positive. Um, but if you're just opening a case or two, you're probably not even going to come close to breaking even, let alone making a profit. So I just kind of want to give that warning out there because I know there's a lot of people that are curious about it. I was curious about it before I started doing it and it, it looked way better before I started doing it. Then I actually started doing it and I realized, wow, these fees and the shipping are just eating me alive, you know? Now, we did this example on a $10 card and we were only gonna make like two, $3 when it's all said and done for our time and effort and, and you know, sending that card away to somebody else instead of keeping it in my own collection. Uh, it almost seems like it's not worth it. Now, the higher end cards are obviously, you do skew that 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 those fees and the shipping and all that stuff do take out a, a much smaller chunk of a buck of a bigger purchase so you know there is something to be said for that now if you're getting a lot of high-end cards and selling those high-end cards actually is a little bit more profitable but you know most of like most of the time you're not going to get enough of those high-end cards in a box to pay for that box on selling those high-end cards so anyways that's my kind of take on it let me know what you guys think let me know if you're doing any selling uh my ebay link is in the description below along with a whole bunch of other good stuff to make you money and get your cash back on your, all your purchases and that's where it really kind of adds up you're, you're gonna end up doing a lot more by using cash back credit cards and like the recruiting app and stuff like that to make your purchases because then you get a percentage back on the whole purchase 
So you end up getting free money that way and helping recoup some of your losses that way. And then when you sell some of the cards, uh, it helps even it out a little bit faster. So there's a lot more strategy to it than just buying a box of cards at your LGS and opening it up and then flipping them online. You're not going to make money that way. Uh, so unless you're buying 500 boxes from your LGS and even then, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a gamble. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if any of this information was helpful, if you were thinking about selling the cards or let me know. All right. And we'll start conversation down there. So thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.